In recent years, the essential performance of intelligent robots has continued to improve significantly. In addition to parts assembly work at factories, robots that cooperate with humans are being introduced to the market. These include waiter robots that directly serve human customers and robots that manage inventory in warehouses alongside human workers. In order to develop such collaborative robots and deploy them in actual working environments, it is necessary to evaluate user experiences. However, compared to robots that perform specific object manipulation tasks in factories, such evaluations are extremely costly in terms of both time and human resources. Moreover, human reactions need to be evaluated in order to carry out the development process of rapid deployment, evaluation, system modification, and redeployment. Since the evaluation of reactions includes a subjective point of view, it may also be necessary to conduct questionnaire surveys, which normally require a great deal of time and effort. Furthermore, while it is crucial for robots to be able to predict human reactions, it is also challenging to accurately simulate user reactions in such real situations. When introducing robots for object manipulation in factories, it is important to note that it is already possible for robots to independently improve their performance by repeating learning. The upper left picture shows research by Google Brain, in which robots repeat trial and error processing for object grasping skill learning. Additionally, many robot simulators have already been developed to facilitate robot learning. There are already numerous simulation use cases aimed at improving the efficiency of the robot behavior design process in order to improve their work efficiency levels. For example, in recent years, as shown in the example on the upper right, Sim2 Reels technology, which combines simulation-based high-speed basic behavior learning with detailed real-world behavior learning, has also evolved. However, the question must be asked, is this the only way to develop a service robot that interacts efficiently with humans? Is it really necessary to spend the long time periods and high human costs needed to first carry out evaluation experiments and then slowly repeat those experiments? In recent COVID-19 environments, such real-world evaluation experiments are even more costly. As shown in the lower left, it is even more difficult to recreate crowded environments. Even if you want to perform a simulation like the one shown in the lower right, the technology for modeling and automating human reaction behavior still needs to be studied. It is now possible to simulate walking routes and speeds in situations where large numbers of people move in crowded stations. On the other hand, it is still difficult for robots to perform complicated actions such as serving customers and mingling in crowds that include both humans and other robots. Furthermore, it is almost impossible to simulate the judgments, cognitive abilities, psychological reactions, etc., of human beings. This makes it nearly impossible to predict human interactions in robot simulations. With those points in mind, we developed a cloud-based VR platform for simulating human-robot interactions. Recently, it has become possible to buy and use cheap consumer VR devices such as Oculus, HTC Vive, and PlayStation VR. This caused us to conjecture that, if we could construct a virtual experimental environment in a cloud computer, we could then invite people to join that virtual world and participate in human-robot interaction experiments. This would make it easy to collect huge amounts of data on the interaction experiences between humans and robots. As a result, the performance of machine learning in the areas of human social skills, intention understanding, and so on, would be improved. It would also provide a forum where the research community could share interactive experiences. Unfortunately, it is currently difficult to advance human-robot interaction research due to COVID-19. Nevertheless, this structure has a strong potential to provide a way to cope with these difficult situations. To realize such a concept, it is necessary for humans to send virtual avatars into the robot simulations. User reactions should be reflected on their avatars in the robot simulations. We adopted the Unity and ROS operating systems OSs, for these functions. Unity is one of the strongest software platforms for developing VR, game systems, and so on. ROS is a universal OS for robots, and its share rate is very high. However, since the frameworks of these two software platforms were too dissimilar, it was necessary to develop a bridging mechanism between Unity and ROS, which is shown here in orange. Developing our own bridge was necessary because the conventional bridging mechanism was too slow and because it was difficult to share the robot sensor signals between Unity and ROS. Our newly developed software module can send signals more than 100 faster than the conventional method. As a result, real-time interactions between virtual robots and real humans have been made possible by our software. The mechanism also has features for recording and replaying those interactions. This platform makes it possible for robots to recall past experiences, even if the experiences were collected by other robots. As one of the application examples, we will share an application featured in robot competitions where performing robots compete by providing services efficiently to humans in daily life situations. Currently, numerous methods for evaluating the performance of AI and robots, such as Kaggle, have been introduced and are now being used in robot competitions in the field of computer science. 
However, as I explained earlier, when evaluating real-time human reactions, simulations alone do not work well. In the previous movie, we showed how our platform reproduces situations where robots provide guidance and explanations using gestures and speech processed in natural language to facilitate the actions that humans are trying to perform. For example, when a person is looking for something necessary for work, the robot guides the person very naturally to where the target object is while taking into consideration the person's position and the direction of this or her line of sight. Since it is difficult to objectively evaluate whether or not the speech processed in natural language was appropriate, we must observe and evaluate human reactions. Therefore, a person wearing a VR device enters the simulation space and proceeds with the work while listening to the guidance provided by the robot. Since all reactions, such as the robot behavior, as well as the human body movements and utterances, can be measured by the VR system, the robot's cooperative ability can be evaluated in real time. The movie I introduced was recorded at an international robot competition called the World Robot Summit when it was held in Tokyo in 2018. However, in recent years, due to COVID-19, it has become difficult to hold robotics competitions in a single venue. Now, we are attempting to hold completely online competitions by taking advantage of cloud-based VR platforms and by participating in dialogue experiments with robots even when the users are at home. The next movie will introduce this concept. The robot's intelligence program runs on a cloud, such as Amazon Web Service AWS, and the subject's homes connect to AWS via a platform in which they can interact with the robots. A partial demonstration is being conducted in the RoboCup Japan Open competition in 2020. Faced with the restrictions imposed by COVID-19 environments, robots that interact with and serve humans are becoming increasingly important. However, it is also becoming increasingly difficult to build a real field for evaluating and improving the performance of robots that interact with humans. Nevertheless, as I have explained in this presentation, our technology has the potential to support the research and development of robots that interact with humans even in such environments.